Oh boy, it's time for a follow-up. If you don't know, I recently uploaded a video where I finished Sonic's story in Sonic Adventure 1 while jumping as few times as possible. It was received quite well, and among other sentiments, there were two prevailing responses. Yes, do make a video for Sonic Adventure 2, and hey, where are all the other characters? Honestly, I didn't think anybody would care about Tails and Knuckles and the rest of them, but you do, so here is the video for them. But first, let's revisit Sonic's story to touch on a few optimizations made possible with some helpful comments. Before that, um, I want to first talk about a bit of tech I only learned the other day when recording this video's footage. Baseline, if you spin dash off of a ledge, Sonic will fall, that makes sense. If you instead spin dash then jump, he'll maintain the momentum and have the extra height and airtime of the jump. It's a spin dash jump. But what's new to me is what I've seen some call spin dash hovering, where you press and hold A before letting go of the dash. This tricks the game into giving Sonic a jump's worth of extra airtime, but without actually jumping. While spin dash hovering might not be required for these subsequent optimizations, it helps out. For example, we can actually get rid of the sewer jump. As Mayonnaise Doctor pointed out, you can actually spin dash off of the ledge on the bottom left and then attack towards the balcony. Nice. Next. Sky Deck. This level still sucks, but as Sonic the Sonic suggested, it is possible to shave off a single jump by using a spin dash jump off of the top of the first ladder pillar. That is a bit tricky because you got a spin dash between the spring and the metal beam, which is a tight fit. I opted to instead perform a jump off of the first pillar, attack mid air, and then finish with a light speed dash to reach the next section. Either way, that's one jump saved. Now, Sonic of the Sonic, Mayonnaise Doctor, and I think at least one other commenter pointed out that Lost World's Darkroom jump is not necessary at all. Turns out that we could actually get over there by charging Lightspeed Dash, using the other button to charge a dash, let go of the dash button, and then repress it very quickly to dash but keeping the light charge, and then releasing the light charge when appropriate. It's a known trick, but it is new to me, and uh, that's how you save a jump. Lastly, in Final Egg, we can actually save another jump in that annoying conveyor belt room. As the doctor prescribed, you can actually get the necessary height using the back conveyor belt, something used and shown off in Refrag's Final Egg in Zero A Press Tax. I think it's a tax. I didn't do that though. While I was using Mayonnaise Doctor's comment as a guideline, I misunderstood, and before being linked to Refrag's video, I figured out that you can actually spin dash hover up and over using the very front of the conveyor belt next to the checkpoint. I sort of used the wrong calculation, but I got the right answer. All in all, that's four jumps removed from our total, bringing our jump total down to 18. Not bad. Onwards, the next story belongs to Tails. His story starts in Station Square, and the game as you go to Mystic Ruins and then fight the Egg Hornet. Much like with Sonic, we just gotta wait till Eggman faceplants and then attack. Pretty easy. As for Windy Valley, Tails chases Sonic through the sky along a bunch of airborne tracks. While we can navigate most of it on foot, it's faster and easier to fly. Tails can fly while airborne even if it's just for a moment after stepping off of a ledge, so with that, it's a simple and jumpless level. Next, we need to head back to town for Casinoopolis. To get in, Tails needs to fly up and hit the button, which there's not a lot to work with, but this part of the stairs does give him enough airtime to activate his flight, meaning that we can actually hit the button without needing to jump. As for the level itself, it's very straightforward. The only tricky thing is that we need to activate our flight going into the last corridor, otherwise Tails can't get over the spikes. Onwards, getting the key to Ice Cap is easy, and then getting onto the ladder using the pool to catch air makes sense. The actual level is also very easy, but it's not as snow boring as Sonic's solo boarding because the illusion of a race is more interesting, I think. Afterwards, I decided to try to get Tails' first upgrade. It's located in Station Square, accessible through a hole in the ceiling in this part of the sewers. It requires some tight flying, but the jet anklet is accessible and jumpless. Back to Mystic Ruins, we demolish Knuckles before again fighting Chaos 4. Like with Sonic, it is challenging. But it's not that bad. Tails still has to worry about the water, but he can take flight by falling off of any of the lily pads. Also, while it's not obvious, Tails can actually damage Chaos while flying, so with well-placed flights, uh, this boss is doable without jumping and without pulling out my hair. Afterwards, we have Sky Chase Act 1, which of course involves no jumps. We head to the pyramid area and find ourselves needing to get into this cave's upper section. It's a little tricky, but very doable. That unlocks a Tails-exclusive section, Sand Hill. 
it's just snowboarding but with sand, so it's just as easy. After that is some more story stuff during which we get the feather that lets Tails spin infinitely, and then move on to Sky Chase Act 2. Right after, we're on the Egg Carrier and headed into Sky Deck when disaster strikes. We get shotgunned onto the first pillar right next to Sonic. We have to chase him, but how can we chase him if we're stuck on the pillar? The pillar that requires you to jump off of it. It's tragic. So Tails must use a single jump to get off of it. As for the level, it's the same path that Sonic has to take, but now he can fly, so it's pretty easy. His last action stage, Speed Highway, requires no jumps, and it's borderline fun. Crazy, I know. Near the end, I actually uh, started getting some mixed messages from Eggman, which is weird. You think you can keep up with me? Tails, wait for me! Right after, we have a unique boss fight against Eggman's Egg Walker. Jumping would allow us to avoid taking damage, and thus make this fight easier, but we could just tank the hits and spin to win. All in all, it's just one single jump for Tails' story, not bad. Next, we have Knuckles the Echidna. Uh, so following some emerald-related plots, we break our way into Speed Highway's Daytime City section. Immediately, you'll notice that things are a bit different than the story before. Rather than racing to our particular goal, we need to gather three emerald shards. Each level has a number of possible spawns for shards, um, and three are randomly chosen each time you enter the level. In order to get the shards, we have two unique modes of transportation, gliding and wall climbing. Both are very handy, but when wall climbing, you're normally expected to jump to detach off of the wall. Thankfully, there are alternatives. If you climb down towards a viable flat surface, Knuckles will drop down off the wall. Likewise, going up, Knuckles will detach with a bit of a boost. This looks like he jumps, but we don't have to press the A button, so this is not a jump. With those aspects in mind, Speed Highway is quite doable. His next level, Casinoopolis, is not so simple. Much like with Sonic and Tails, he has to hit the button to unlock the entrance. The only issue is that we're expected to climb onto the structure and then jump over and hit the button. It's a bit hard to show, but the only surfaces that I could find that Knuckles can climb in the entirety of Station Square is that one structure and the inner walls of the train station. That's pretty much it. He just bounces off of everything else. If we can get onto the climbable structure, we can dislodge the top without jumping, but nothing boosts him anywhere high enough, and not even that little bit of stairs that we use with tails can get him over there. I spent like an hour in this and the connected areas testing out ideas. We can always go and get Mr. Bobsworth, the businessman statue, and use him to clip out of bounds near the station entrance, but that doesn't help very much. The death plane is right below the floor, so Knuckles dies a second after gliding. Speaking of the station, you're not allowed in through the front or side until after you uh, finish Casino Opelix. It is possible to enter if we clip out of bounds and then jump up into the front entrance's loading zone. While this doesn't help because I needed to jump to get to the loading zone, if we were in the station, there might be a way to clip back out of the station, but now higher up, so that we could glide and hit the button. I did try to use Bobsworth to clip through one of the walls or even the entrance to the casino itself, but I had no luck. As such, I gotta move on, because like, we have so many more characters. So that's one jump to reach the structure, and then just glide the button. As for the level, it's much simpler. It takes place in the main lobby of the casino, including a bunch of wacky attractions higher up, than what you did with Sonic. Um, there are a bunch of springs around, more than enough to get high up to the ceiling, and you can detach pretty much everywhere. There are a couple spots where you can get stranded, but if you use the restart in the menu, uh, it'll spawn you back at spawn, costing a life. That means on each attempt, you have like at minimum three redos before you have to get a game over and actually restart, unless you have more lives. All that together makes it doable without jumping, no matter what the spawns are, and if the spawns were really bad, we could always just exit the level and re-enter until it works out, you know? Right after, we follow Eggman up the elevator in the hotel for a unique fight against Chaos 2. We just need to wait out his uh, flubber phase, and then attack him from behind after he commits to an attack. Knuckles is a close quarters fighter, so no jumps are needed or expected. Next, we head to Mystic Ruins and into this cave for the Metal Claws. It lets Knuckles dig down into the ground by pressing X and A. As long as we're careful to press X first and then A, we'll never accidentally jump, so it's not putting us at risk, and it's pretty easy to use. 
Also, digging will cause Knuckles to pop into the air briefly. This is actually enough airtime to get him up over some ledges or glide to a nearby surface, which is pretty handy. With that, Red Mountain is even easier than the previous levels. Afterwards, we get to beat up Sonic no. before, yet again, somehow, for some reason, having to fight Chaos 4. Even if you try gliding, you're going to end up in that quicksand-like pond real quick. Knuckles can't dash around like Sonic, but he can navigate just barely using his three-hit combo. Um, I'm not sure why also, but I found that rings fall off of Knuckles much slower and closer than with Sonic, perhaps because he is supposed to be a slower, close-range kind of character. Whatever the reason, it helps, and we can just barely three-hit combo our way to victory, all without jumping. That said, I don't want to ever revisit this pond ever again. Afterwards, we head into the Pyramid Zone area. I don't know if it's really necessary, but we can then travel to the opposite end of the map and use the trunk of Big's house to reach this platform containing the fighting gloves. This gives Knuckles a charge up and release homing attack. It's like flight speed dash, but less fitting for his character. After I quit out to get back to the start of Mystic Ruins. I could have avoided this if I took the golden key from the platform first, but you know what to say, live and learn. After depositing the golden key at the temple, we can then get the silver key and then head into Lost World. It's basically that final area of the level with the gravity panels. It's not super accessible as there are no floor level springs, but you do spawn on a block that is high enough to get you onto a nearby wall. Um, said walls, all four of them, have platforms or holes higher up that you could use to dislodge, so navigating isn't too tricky. I'm not sure if every possible emerald spawn point on this map is within reach, but the majority are, so this level is possible without jumping. Finally, Sky Deck. <laughs> this level does suck, but the section we're exploring is the last one where you have to tilt the ship back and forth if necessary. It's less accessible because we can't dig down through metal, but we can always restart if needed, or simply run into one of these stationary turrets, uh, which their demise actually boosts Knuckles up, so mobility is not too bad. Uh, it took me a bit longer than it probably should have, but I got all the shards, completing yet another level without jumping. Afterwards, we refight Chaos 6. Some comments mentioned that Sonic's light speed attack demolishes this boss, and Knuckles' charge up attack might do the same. I don't know, but I just used the ice drones and some punching. No problem though. With that, we finish Knuckles' story in just a single jump. Huzzah! Onwards to Amy's story, which is the shortest one thus far. While Amy is slower than Sonic and less mobile than Tails and Knuckles, she still has options, namely her hammer. While sprinting, she could actually use it to get flung into the air. This uses the attack button, not the jump button, so this is totally fine to use. So in her first level, we run through Twinkle Park trying to escape Zero, one of Eggman's robots. The platforming needed isn't too difficult, but maintaining the full sprint required to execute hammer bounces is quite annoying. Any damage kills her momentum, and Amy takes a few moments to get back up to a sprint. She's very slow to get moving. You also have to go in a straight line, as turning more than a little bit prevents you from entering the sprint. While Zero probably isn't an issue during normal gameplay, when you have to backtrack and get a running start before any of the platforming, he could be a real nuisance. That said, Twinkle Park as a level isn't too bad, though the small tunnel with the spikes is annoying. Thankfully, getting here and dying actually triggers an unseen autosave that drops you at the following checkpoint, so like, sweet. The only other challenging spot was these stairs. Everything after to the escape balloon is easy peasy, though the balloon itself actually hitting the hitbox is weird. After that level, and a couple of cutscenes, we pass go, collect $200, and go straight to jail. And then we're released by Gamma. Now we're on the Egg Carrier. Going into the next room, we find ourselves forced to play Hedgehog Hammer, uh, where you bash blue and yellow versions of Sonic while avoiding Eggman. This is, as far as I'm aware, completely required because the door out of here will not open unless you beat Eggman's measly high score. That would be simple, but to initiate the minigame, you have to jump onto the platform or jump while on it. Simply, hammer bouncing doesn't count. I was ready to consider this a required jump until I did the unthinkable. <laughs> I pressed the A button while falling from a hammer bounce, and it worked. The minigame started. 
in hindsight, it's so obvious and I feel dumb for not realizing it, but the game is only expecting you to press the A button, not actually jump. We just have to hit the A button while in the hitbox, that's it. Jumping is irrelevant. With that, we can complete the minigame no problem, uh, getting the useless warrior feather and moving on to the next level, Hot Shelter. Hot Shelter is annoying. It's not all that difficult, but it has a few spots where you gotta do some very precise hammer bounces to get through, like near the start. You gotta bounce across this pool of water. It, it looks easy, but it's also easy to mess up. Falling in the water or landing on a ladder means you have to restart. Afterwards, we come to this room where the game expects you to flood with the button in the middle. Getting up the stairs requires some careful air movement, but the button is totally optional. The door opens if you get to the other side, so we could just skip that. The room right after is also annoying because there is another set of stairs, this time much narrower. And also, it doesn't really matter if you use free cam or auto cam, the camera is atrocious in this game. And it's especially bad here. If you're building up a sprint and the game decides to turn the camera, you can lose all your momentum. I spent way too long here. As for getting up the stairs, it's a bit tricky. A single good hammer bounce gets you to the highest step, but that's not quite enough. The little lip of the tunnel is enough to hold us back. That means we need to perform a hammer bounce off of one of the steps, which is difficult because it's so narrow and the camera or the red railing can just straight up destroy your momentum. Quick note, I've had debug mode available this whole time because I never disabled the mod. This does not affect the gameplay at all, but it does make my eventual singular lucky success very suspect when you're just looking at it because I fumbled the control and hit the button, but trust me, it is possible without jumping. I just couldn't recreate it because I'm bad and also I'm not using save states because I'm crazy. In the following room we have a similar issue because we have to get up the same kind of stairs, but this set of stairs is pushable and we can actually push them halfway in front of the tunnel and then use the red railing to clip us up and in there. And then we come to this room where... <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay, it's actually not that bad. All of the gears that we have to navigate are big enough for the hammer bounce to uh, get us up and over or across. And the collision on the gears themselves is forgiving enough to let us hug one that's moving upwards and get swept along. The turning bridge is a little precarious but doable. And getting onto the balloon is always annoying, but uh, on all, this level is totally jumpless. After that level, we go through some more plot and some straightforward overworld travel into Amy's final level, Final Egg. She starts by taking the same path as Sonic, which then diverges just before that annoying conveyor belt room. While the pick the right room, room had me stuck for a moment, I did get through and I finished the level with minimal effort. The real challenge comes when we must backtrack through Mystic Ruins. The only way into or out of the area is with the minecart atop the platform, where you got that golden key earlier. Said platform is only accessible with a ladder. We don't need to jump to get on the ladder, but we do have to jump to get off of the ladder. How unfortunate. That done, we take a wooden boat ride to fight Zero. The trick here is to knock him backwards into the electric fence and then bonk his weak point. Said weak point is high enough that you're probably expected to jump, but after some attempts I found that Amy's hammer attack reaches just high enough to hit if you're right up against zero. With that, we finish Amy's story in just one single jump. Cowabunga, I guess? I don't know what to say here. The next character is also my least favorite. Like, don't get me wrong, Big of the Cat is a fun meme. You don't have a thought behind those eyes, do you? and the idea of him is entertaining, but actually playing the game as big the cat is big the frustration. He's not all that slow, but he is so cumbersome that he can't get up a single ramp without some careful movement. Anyways, more complaining in a bit. Uh, we start by following Froggy into the sewers. We're then required to do two jumps to navigate the boxes in front of the elevator that allow us into Twinkle Park. In said park, we must participate in a bit of Froggy fishing. If you know what you're doing, this doesn't take very long. Unfortunately, I neglected to freshen up on uh, my uh, fishing skills, so it took me a little bit to reel in my buddy. Either way, no jumps required. After exiting the park, we're tasked with taking the ice key to the ice cave. Unfortunately, said key is located across this small body of water. The slope next to the key is annoying, but you can get up it by running along the little wall. It's just that there is this invisible barrier that sort of pushes you off. 
Um, thanks to that barrier, we can't take the same way back, so we must perform one jump to get out of the water with the key. Then, as soon as we get to the ruins, we have to get up this rubble, which is difficult, but you can do it without jumping if you have enough speed and the proper movement. Once the key is placed, we can then grab the life belt, which lets us float in the water. This also means that uh, while floating, you actually bob up and down, which is enough to get us out of the water. But then we have to <laughs> jump to get onto the ladder. Not nice. Now, as much as I would love to let Froggy freeze for putting me through this frustration, I caught him and I went back to Station Square where we can just walk into Emerald Coast. What a groundbreaking idea. That said, random thought, I don't know about you, but this track always felt kind of whiny to me. Either way, Froggo was jumpless. Right after, we find ourselves on the Egg Carrier. We need to get into Hot Shelter, whose door is locked behind a very simple button. Despite my attempts, which lasted like 10 minutes, it was way too long, I simply couldn't land on the button from above. I think it's possible, I just could not do it. So we're going to add one more jump to Big's list of shame. As for the level, we are required to do a bit of platforming. The first little water trap isn't bad, we can float up and let momentum pop us up over the ledge. The issue is that afterwards we need to get to the button in this room that we bypassed with Amy. The most efficient way I found is to get a running start, do one jump to get partway up the stairs, then one more jump to the lower rim, and then one final jump to hit the button. From this spot we can then cast out our line and fish up Froggy. Afterwards we navigate out and to Chaos 6 where we have a boss fight, I guess? Okay, whatever. Story done, took 8 jumps, let's move on. Our last story belongs to E102 Gamma. He starts off in the Egg Carrier, where the first level is super short, just introducing his aim and shoot mechanics, no jumping needed. Afterwards we fight a, a boss? You don't even need to move to win. Um, from there we find ourselves in Station Square, where I realize there is a bit of a problem. If Amy's gameplay was about maintaining a sprint, Gamma's is about avoiding a sprint. Whenever you sprint as Gamma, you'll transform into a sort of car part mode. It's quite fast, but it can't go over even the tiniest of ledges. The only way to exit this form is to jump, hit a spring, fall off of a ledge and hover, or get hit by an enemy. Uh, none of that's possible in the overworld, so let's just avoid doing that. In Emerald Coast, we just have to get through this first snippet of the level and collect Froggy. It's short, and there are plenty of ways to get out of cart mode if needed, so it's no problem. We then return to the Egg Carrier, where we free Amy, before heading into a side room for the Jet Booster upgrade. This lets Gamma float by pressing A while airborne. It's quite handy because we have to use the Jet Booster to reach the elevator out of here. And then, oh look, it's Sonic. Oh look, it was Sonic. Then, in the Mystic Ruins, we need to collect the Wind Key, and you know the drill. In Windy Valley, we have to reach the end and destroy E-103. For the first section, we need to be careful crossing the bridge, and then use the spring and hover to get past this platforming. The next bit is pretty simple, but then we get here. Ahead is a purple worm enemy, a couple islands, and frustration. Gamma has a very hard time getting over this little ledge, and even after he does, the only way forward goes down, before we're expected to jump up to a spring. I messed around a bunch trying to hover to the nearby ramp, but invisible walls held me back. I originally thought that a jump was required here, but while writing this script that I'm currently reading and voicing to you, I went back and I discovered a strategy to skip needing to jump at all. To do this, we have to restart the level entirely. From that very first spring, we can actually turn around and land on this pillar with a 1-up capsule above it. Nearby is a spring that the game probably thought you would use to get here. That spring gives us a lot of height, enough that we can actually hover to the right and forward through the entirety of the level, allowing us to reach the Robo Fight Jumpless. It feels so good to get this done without needing to jump. The fight itself though is a joke. The next level is Red Mountain. Spoiler, um, this level is a lot like Windy Valley in that I did find a way to get all the way to the end, but the boss fight was just out of reach. But again, while writing this script, I actually managed to find a way to clip out of bounds right at the start of the level, and then hover all the way over directly to the arena, resulting in yet another jumpless 
level for Gamma, which is also pretty quick. Our final level is Hot Shelter, which means we have to travel back to the Egg Carrier. Once there, we have two ways of getting down into the Desire Room. We have the Elevator and the Monorail. The Elevator would require a jump, but the Monorail is quite accessible, so that's what I use. Heading through Hot Shelter, we see similar, if not the same rooms that Amy did. This time, it's even easier because Gamma can hover across most of the gaps and we can use the occasional spring as needed. For the rotating bridge room, we can just shoot the button from afar. Getting carried around by the claw is a little weird, but we can actually hover after it lets us go for some added mobility. The real obstacle of this level is the moving train section. The game expects you to fight and jump your way forward on the train and then hop to the other side. You then keep moving forward, jump back, and you get the idea. Thankfully, you can actually press and hold the A button so that Gamma hovers whenever possible. If you do this and move off of the train, the game will actually pop Gamma up, which isn't a jump, but it is helpful. When it doesn't do this, it'll turn him into a sort of hovercraft mode, which isn't the end of the world because you can get back onto the train. It took a lot of confused fumbling, but you can get to the front of the train and stop it. Just make sure that you immediately hover after the transition because otherwise Gamma can't get onto the wooden platform with the checkpoint. After that, we fall for a bit before getting speed boosted into the boss fight against E-105. This is more of an actual fight than the other robos, but it's still very easy. Finally, we take the monorail back up to fight E-101 Mark II in the same arena as the others fought Chaos 6. This requires some actual strategy, but no jumping. After that, we're treated to the credits as Gamma's story concludes in a very healthy, respectable, lovely zero jumps. Great work, buddy. Completing all of the character stories unlocks the final segment called Super Sonic. In it, we mash pause button through all of the plots and then roll over to the floating island. Is this Angel Island? I can never remember what it's actually called, but getting over this little lip was surprisingly difficult, but doable. We then point and laugh at Eggman and Knuckles before getting sent directly to the past? I don't, actually don't know. We then travel back through the Mystic Ruins, skip some more cutscenes, and suddenly the world is ending. <laughs> That came out of nowhere. Chaos has obtained its true form, and it's too strong for the Egg Carrier 2, which shows up and then it gets immediately destroyed. It's now up to Sonic and the positive power of the Emeralds, friendship, and this gun I found to stop perfect chaos once and for all. While in supersonic form, we can float across the water and we move very quickly. Um, it's just supersonic is powered by rings, so we have to make sure to collect plenty as we go, which isn't too bad. The boss battle itself is split into two distinct segments where you do the same thing twice. The first time, Perfect Chaos doesn't do too much in terms of attacks, but it's more than enough to slow us down. We don't have to jump like at all, even during normal gameplay, but jumping is the only real way to build up speed outside of those boost panels or just very slowly ramping up. As such, dodging attacks is more important than ever. In the second phase, we are treated to some quality butt rock as we live and learn, escape the city, open our hearts, all that jazz, and we've won! Having beat up Chaos, he is now a good boy, and Tikal appears out of nowhere to abduct him to god knows where. With that, we're done! And Sonic can't help but jump for joy in the cutscene. I'm not counting that. You can't make me. At last, I can answer the real burning question that no one really asked. How many jumps does it take to actually beat Sonic Adventure? If my high-level mathematics is correct, carry the 1, multiply it by pi, it's 29 jumps to reach and complete the true ending. Nice. All that said, I guess I gotta go play Sonic Adventure 2 next. Outro time. Big thanks to my channel members for their support with a The Cat size thanks to Achilles Rhodes and Captain Crayfish for being super fans. If you watched this far, thank you. Make sure you leave a like if you like the video, perhaps subscribe if you want, and also why not check out some of my other videos. That's about it for this one. Goodbye.